Hey guys, today I bring you one of the most interesting cars I think we've had on the channel in a while because this is a Volkswagen Touareg, a car I love, but not just any Touareg, Lucas. Thanks for having me. Lucas came down with a V10 TDI, the myth, the legend. And first of all, dude, are you crazy? Why a Touareg V10? Because life's too boring to drive a Jeep or a Toyota product, in my opinion. No, but seriously, like, how did you discover the Touareg? And I mean, how did you start embarking down this journey? So there was a there was a small channel, and they had a call. Like, I think it was like a Tough T Touareg that they did uh, Moab in. And I was in an i3 looking for something more off-road capable because the i3 can't do anything. So I bought the most reliable generation of Touareg, and it wasn't that reliable. Oh. Um, I had, you know, the, the DEF system went out, it had some mysterious check engine light limp mode issues that no dealer could fix under the Dieselgate warranty. And I thought, what's the point of having a car that you don't want to work on yourself and having someone else work on it and they can't figure it out? So I thought I just might as well get something unreliable that I could fix myself and kind of just have that. Now, is that one of the keys, do you think, like being able to fix it yourself if you're going to buy one of these? I, if you need to watch a YouTube video on how to change your brakes or something like that, or like change a tire, probably not the right car for you. Okay. Or if you're like a forerunner that they never brake and you just install like LED lights on it all the time, probably not the car for you. But a forerunner also doesn't have like, what, 530 pound-feet of torque. Right, yeah. Right? The T1 Touregs are just so cool to begin with. Um, and I think it's becoming more widely known now that you could get them with the V10s. Uh, but the other thing which is becoming more widely known is that these V10s can be an absolute basket case. So when you bought this vehicle, did you go into it expecting that you'd have to put a lot of money into it? Yeah, so I filed bankruptcy three times already, having to maintain this thing because it's been, this was just been horrible. I had to sell my house, I sold my kid actually. <laughs> no, it's, it's actually not been bad. V10 issues, the only issue it had was a the thermostat, um, which the last owner knew about. He included the thermostat, they're like 300 bucks. Um, swapping that was two hours worth of work and no check engine lights since. Um, but everything else has gone wrong with the suspension and basically everything else. But uh, the engine-wise, it's actually been the most reliable thing um, on the car, unfortunately. <laughs> That's super interesting. Now, Lucas, you're a mechanic. Yeah. And you do, yeah, you do all the work yourself. Yeah. So talk to me with these engines. Like, what are some of the pros and, and what are some of the cons? Like, are there things that tend to go bad more frequently than other things? Yeah, so the turbos go out on it, um, which that's an engine out job. The starter goes out, engine out job. Um, other than that, alternator you could do with it in the car um, and everything else is kind of sort of accessible. Um, the valve covers, that's a kind of a stupid issue that you can't buy the gasket itself. You have to buy a whole new cover and those are 800 bucks a piece. So you're almost probably at two grand and if you're paying someone to do it, two grand in parts and labor just to do valve covers, which is a third of the price of a car for some people, but it's, uh, it's not terrible. So does the engine, does it live up to the hype? Is it as crazy as everyone says it is or by modern standards, is it pretty tame? I think horsepower number wise, it's pretty tame. Engineering wise, I don't think there's anything currently being engineered and built like the, the way this was at least, where it's all gear driven, there's no chains, there's no belts, it's all oh. very mechanical. That's, so you, you went to look for one and you said you found this one in the Midwest. Yeah, so it was a, it was a Texas car and uh, the first owner had it uh, from, from purchase until it was like 180 or 170 or 175,000 miles. Some guy in Wisconsin bought it, had it for about 10,000 miles and then I picked it up. So it's uh, pretty clean underneath compared to what we have in Chicago. And what did you pay for it? Uh, six grand. Six grand. So the thing like with the V10s, and maybe you can explain this, when you see them online, they're either like 3,500 and they need everything, or they're like 20 grand and people think that they're like a miracle. They probably still need everything though. Uh, we were talking off camera and you said that even though the engine's been perfect, you've had to do a lot of work to the suspension. Can you kind of talk to me about that? Yeah, so the front end, basically when I bought it, um, it needed upper control arms, which is, I was like, okay, fine, no big deal. Uh, this bag had an issue on the uh, passenger side, leaking all the air out of it. So we limped it back home, uh, did the bags, found out it needed a tie, uh, tie rod, so did the both tie rods. And as I'm finishing up on the driver's side, kind of shake the wheel and notice that the control arm bushing is shot. You know, looking to modify this vehicle, which clearly you've done, is there a pretty big aftermarket community? How do you go about finding parts like that? Uh, so Eurowise makes basically almost everything except this uh, tire carrier on this thing. Um, they're kind of my go-to. There's a couple other companies that make uh, coilovers for these things or, you know, small knickknacks for it, but Eurowise is really kind of 
stepped up to the ball and they're making all the, all the parts for these things. So let's take a quick peek on the inside because I think this is one of the, the coolest parts about these vehicles is they're just so incredibly comfy. So I see you have the air suspension, right? But all yeah. the V10s had the air suspension. Yeah, they all right? had that. Um, this one does not have the rear locker. I do have one sitting in my garage that I have to, to install still. And talk um, to me about that. I mean, is that like a retrofittable job? How does that work? Yeah, so I mean, you basically need the, uh, the rear locker itself, um, the module that sits in the rear, and then the switch, and then all the wiring. Um, it's about six wires, powers and grounds, a couple of CAN bus um, signal wires, and then it kind of all, all works, and some coding with a batch gun. And then it should be, <laughs> it should be in, in theory. So for Lucas, who's a mechanic, makes that sound easy. Yeah, yeah, it, it's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's somewhat easy, but you're, I think, I don't know, your average DIY person might not be able to, to tackle that, but it's not, it's not a space shuttle, it's, it's a Volkswagen. Are these cars capable of lasting 200, 250,000 miles? Uh, I mean, this one's 205 and- Pretty good. I made it here to, to Denver so far, so. Pretty good. So far, so good. Yeah, uh, well, I mean, what are like the big issues? I've read turbos are a problem, um, like uh, drive shafts are a problem. What have you had to do on this one? Uh, so the turbos, to my knowledge, are still original and touched. <laughs> so that's probably a ticking time bomb, two ticking time bombs. Um, the drive shaft center support bearing blew out probably within two weeks of, oh, two weeks of ownership, basically, um, with my driving, at least. <laughs> um, the front, front end suspension got redone. The kind of just typical Volkswagen uh, Turek stuff, not necessarily the V10, that's been the most reliable part of the car. I've only had to do a thermostat on it, so. That's the only work I've done for the engine. Uh, I did the suspension, the rear gas struts for the hatch, um, the lift kit, and then all the all the Eurowise goodies on it. So not, not I mean, your girlfriend's around the corner, but approximately, are you, do you think you're like, what, 25 grand into it in total, or are you under? I uh, actually, 13 right now. 13? 13 as it sets. Without, That's it. Without, um, without the, the rooftop tent, and then without the spare tire carrier. So with everything, probably I'm at like 16, 17. How are the transmissions on the V10s? Are they pretty strong? Uh, to my knowledge, uh, they don't like tunes and stuff. So that's why I'm, I kind of want to keep the tune off of it. Um, I know there's, um, there's some uh, company in England, they do tunes on it and they do, they eventually hit like a torque limiter where the trans doesn't like it and, and they kind of have their issues, but as of right now, the running gear on it is, is working, so hopefully it stays stays like that for this trip, and hopefully we'll be good. Did these have any emissions equipment that goes wrong? Uh, they do. Uh, this one doesn't have the DPFs on it. It's okay. a, an 08 plus. They had DPFs. This one is an 06, so no DPFs. It's got uh, the cats in the EGR. Those haven't had issues yet. So this is the part I'm really excited about because. Um, Lucas is, is more brave than I am when it comes to off-roading old German cars. Um, and I you- know, I don't know if brave is the right word, but <laughs> I think it's more stupid, but. So you, you had that T3 on Black Bear Pass, on Hell's Revenge, on all these trails. Yeah. And do you really want to take this on the Rubicon? Yeah, is that? that's, that's my plan for next year. Um, hopefully it, it pans out. I need the bumper from Eurowise for, for a winch on there, and I think it's, it's ready to do it. That's crazy. Now, this one doesn't have the rear locking diff. If someone out there is looking to wheel one like you are, is that a must, like do you need it? To me, I'm just doing it just to do it. Okay. I don't know if it's a need or not. The the kind of the e-lockers these things come with, they do a good job enough, in my opinion. You have both, you've got the, the Touareg and the Cayenne. Yep. Which one do you like more? My girlfriend's Cayenne's way cooler. Is it? Oh yeah. Even cooler than the V10? I think so. Better off-road, about the same? I don't know, We we've, uh, she had got it maybe a month ago. Okay. Um, so it's gonna be, We'll get him tires for it when we come back from this trip and maybe a left and I'll scumbag her and uh, get him some other stuff, hopefully. So you have such a positive personality. Like, if you're gonna hold on to this long term, is there something that would break that would cause it to be like, nope, I'm done with it? Is there one part that... I, I feel like a lot of people are really scared of them because of, of like the lure. I like this, it's just a Volkswagen attitude. Yeah, to me it's, I don't know. It's, I don't think there's anything, unless it got totaled. I th even, if, even if it got totaled, I'd probably, chop the body and do like 40s or something on it. It's so stupid, but I don't know. To me, it's a, it's a car I really enjoy driving. And I've toyed around with the idea of like an LR3 or an LR4, but I'm just stupid and I like both seconds, I guess. Lucas, thank you. This, yeah. was, this was super cool. Really appreciate it. I think this will clear up a lot of the myths about the V10s. And um, should you buy one? If you know how to work on it, do it. If don't, don't. There you go. Yeah. From, from the horse's mouth itself. All right, we'll see you next time. <laughs>